Welcome, Commanders, to Starfleet Academy for Star Trek Fleet Command. I am your instructor, Captain Pike, and today we'll be doing a crew analysis on Dezak. Dezak was introduced into Star Trek Fleet Command, the February 2023 ARC Assimilation Part 2. On release day, he had a free-to-play path to obtain his shard. This path is limited, so it will take a long time to acquire his shards this way. We will discuss the ways you can acquire Dezok later in this video. For now, let's check out Dezok's specifications. Dezok is a rare officer. He is a member of the Unimatrix 12 group in-game. His race is Borg, and his officer division is Science. Dezok will provide synergy to any member of the Unimatrix 12 group at varying levels based on division uniqueness. Because he has no captain ability, he receives no synergy from the group. Dezok's lack of captain ability seems fitting for a Borg drone, since they are servants to the collective. I do find it interesting that Dezok, being a drone, has an individualistic classification like Locutus, instead of a group classification like our earlier released Borg crew. Dezok's officer ability is Choke Point. While fighting against a Borg solo armada, increase all officer stats by 10% for the duration of combat. This will go up to 50% at Commander. This stat boost is across the board, so he could be helpful in giving you that extra boost to crew percent on your ship against Borg solo armadas, or BSAs. This officer ability is going to have different value for each commander when selecting officers for their ships in their BSA fleet. Since his division is science, he will provide full synergy to any command division or engineering division officer. Here are some things to like about Dezok's officer ability. The percent boost is to all stats, not just one like health, attack, or defense. At commander, a 50% increase can be a huge boost to all stats. A few things we need to consider are this ability is restricted to Borg solo armadas, can easily be replaced with an exocomp. The common exo is better than his ensign percent to uncommon exocomp that's equal to his commander percentage. And we're using up a critical bridge slot that could be used for mitigation or damage boost. Some players may find value in this ability with the restricted use though against only BSAs and with other available crew, this ability might not see much action. He does have a below deck ability that is adapt and assimilate. At the start of each round, if the opponent's hull health is below 95%, Dezok has a 40 percent chance to apply assimilate to it for four rounds. While a ship is affected by the assimilate state, officer abilities have their effectiveness reduced by 25 percent. The chance to assimilate goes up to 70 percent at commander. The second part of Dezok's below the deck ability is all PvP focus. So if you are a PvE player it's not going to have much value for you. I do like that there are two parts to this below the deck ability, making Dezok have some value on his own, unlike the Borg Queen released at the same time. You would think that the Borg Queen would have had the assimilate part of his below the deck ability, and Dezok just had the second part of his ability, as this would make the Borg Queen independent where Dezok would be dependent on the Borg Queen or future triggers we may get for the assimilate condition in game. A few positive things to note about Dezok's below the deck ability is it has a negative impact on players alongside the assimilate condition. His ability can be used all by itself and the assimilate condition is not tied to a target type, meaning that it does have PVE potential. Dezok's traits are Assimilated and Physicist. There are six away team assignments that require the Assimilated trait. They are 
Collective Bargaining, Geothismal Conditioning, Investigate Borg Signal, War Contractor, Salvage Operation, and War Zone Reclamation. There are nine ATAs that need the physicist trait. Some of these are tied to your operations level. The primary difference between the operations locked ATAs are the rewards are adjusted for your operations level. The physicist ATAs are accelerated bioforming, experimental procedures adjusting by your operations level, geological evaluation, planet side shipyard, research and development, scientific breakthrough available at ops 30 and higher, and smuggling cybernetics. As you can see by the list, none of the ATAs use both traits. So if you use him on an ATA, you will not get maximum yield for the traits if you invest trait XP into him. I would rate him a medium for interest in use for ATAs only because of the number of ATAs that he could be used on. So let's put Dezak on one of our ships and see how he performs. First, we'll start with Borg Solo Armadas. We cannot run Dezok as captain. We need to leverage his synergy. So we'll run 5 of 11, Borg Queen, and Dezok. And we'll place him on my Coronar. 5 of 11's captain ability is Weaponry is Irrelevant. 5 of 11 increases his shield deflection. Armor and dodge by 200% of the total health of all officers on the ship. This is going to be essential for us because this is where all of our mitigation is going to come from on our Kornar. To support 5's captain ability, we'll stack health below the deck. 5's officer ability is you will be assimilated. 5 of 11 increases the amount of resources dropped from hostiles by 20%, going up to 100% at Commander. Dezak will bring full synergy to our captain. His officer ability is Choke Point. While fighting against a Borg Solo Armada, increase all officer stats by 10% for the duration of combat. At Commander, this will increase to 50%. And our final officer will also bring full synergy to 5 of 11. She will be the Borg Queen. The Borg Queen's officer ability, Chaos into Order, will give us while fighting against a Borg Solo Armada. Upon receiving hull damage from an enemy shot, increase critical hit chance by 2% cumulative. This is at Ensign, and it goes all the way up to 7% at Commander. There are several alternatives we can run to the Borg Queen, but in this particular scenario, out of all the alternative options, the Borg Queen was the best choice. Some of those alternatives are Gosa, who provides only a 200% synergy to 5 of 11, 6 of 11, 7 of 11, and alternative we could run our whole breach officer like Lorca. Check out our Borg Solo Armada video for tips on running the BSA loop and crew suggestions for all of your ships. So let's test out Dezak and crew on a 53 rare Borg Solo Armada. On the pylum, we'll be running the DS9 crew that has Cisco, Miles, and Bashir. As you can see here, we have our Dezak crew, which we just discussed earlier, with five Borg Queen and Dezak. As you can see down there, I actually have my health stacked very heavy at 72,753 points, balancing all of my stats for the full 450% boost. And here we have our uh, TA running Picard, Beverly, and I'm going to go ahead and put Lorca on here because I want to take advantage of the whole bridge. Checking to see what I could do to 
get more defense and also increase my bonuses uh, as high as possible. So I'm going to pop a couple different crew on here. Um, just trying to balance things out because I want to get that uh, optimal configuration. I was really looking for a way to get my attack up a little bit higher, but I decided that I was good enough. I've got uh, really good defense to support Beverly uh, Crusher, and uh, the other two crew really don't need any support. So let's uh, send her off into the system here. After I've scouted for the uh, rare solo armada with the highest credits. It looks like I found it, so we're going to send the ships in, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording while we warp into the system, and we'll get the armada started. Now it looks like all our ships have entered into the system, so we'll start the armada. And uh, a minute and 30 seconds, we'll see how it does, and then we'll check out the battle log. And we'll do a little time boost on the counter here so we can get this armada to fire off. So let's see how it does. And uh, as you can see, there are no exos or boosts running. So this is just straight up corner, pylum, and Vidar Talios. And uh, really happy with the results on this. Uh, the Talios held up very well. Uh, compared to the other two ships, so that just means it didn't really get hit at all uh, during the rounds of battle, so I'm kind of surprised about that. Uh, but overall, this was a good kill. Uh, 53 Borg Rare Solo Armadas with no buffs using a uh, Kornar, Pylum, and Vidar Talios. You see uh, Dezok fired off right at the beginning there. Uh, got some good uh, initial uh, procs on uh, most of my crew there, so pretty happy with that. Overall, the battle only ran five rounds, uh, so very short armada battle. So as we roll through this battle log, we're going to see a lot of crits, primarily from the Pylum. It's running the DS9 crit crew. And then we're going to see the Coronar really start to throw out some crits as the Borg Queen spins up and uh, starts to increase the critical chance of the Coronar, um, which happens shortly here. So we'll start to see those uh, criticals show up from the Coronar. So really, ultimately, I am throwing criticals like crazy uh, with Lorca on the Vidar Talios. Those damages are just amplified as well. Uh, so that really makes a very good build. It's hard to say what kind of benefit Dezok gives other than the synergy for uh, 5 of 11. Uh, but he does boost the stats of the officers below the deck. Well, now let's switch over and see how Dezok does in PvP activities. And as a reminder, Dezok's uh, below the deck ability is his PvP ability, and that's Adapt and Assimilate. Uh, at the start of each round, if the opponent's hull health is below 95%, Dezok has a 40% chance to apply the assimilate condition to it for four rounds. While the ship is affected by the assimilate state, officer abilities have their effectiveness reduced by 25%. And with Dezok initiating the assimilate condition, we want to leverage the other crew that we may have that will trigger off of that condition as well. So in this case, we'll put in the Borg Queen. Borg Queen's PV 
P ability is her below the deck ability, the one who is many. Uh, what this does is when fighting a player with Assimilate, Borg Queen increases the ship's armor piercing, shield piercing, and accuracy by 150% each round cumulative. This will go up to 500% at Commander. Another officer that will take advantage of the Assimilate condition is Gasa. Gasa's below the deck ability is closer to perfection. While fighting a player's ship with Assimilate, Gasa increases the ship's armor, shield deflection, and dodge by 125% each round cumulative. This will go up to 300% at Commander. So what is the trio of Dezok, Gasa, and the Borg Queen going to do for us against bases? I found in testing is that most of the time, Dezok would not proc, and therefore, both Goza and Borg Queen wouldn't proc. And the reason is because of conditions of the base. And so there are some things that we need to consider if we want to try and leverage them for base cracking crew. How many ships are docked at the base? No ships means that Dezok is not going to proc because we need a ship below 95% hull health in order for him to trigger. How big are those ships? Again, a ship is going to have to survive the initial attack and in order for Dezok to proc because we need to get that ship under the 95% hull health. We also need to consider the crews that are on those ships because the crew configuration obviously is going to impact the survivability of those ships when you hit them. So as far as bases go, unless you're trying to break a whale, I'm not sure you're going to find much value in running the assimilate crew below the deck on your cracking ship. Ship to ship is another story. Initially, it doesn't appear that Dezok and the Assimilate crew below the deck will be a strike team killer. The condition with the current available crew does seem to level the playing field a little bit though. In every PvP log I reviewed, Dezok did not trigger until at least round 2. And this is what we expected based on Dezek's below the deck ability description. And in many cases, he wasn't tripping until round three or four. This will give your opponent's strike team opportunity to spin up their abilities. But once Dezok does trigger the Assimilate state and the Assimilate crew's abilities activate, your ship has a fighting chance to turn the tides of battle. You can see this result in the battle log that's playing, and you will see it in your logs if you review them. So how are we going to obtain the Dezok shards? His shards were the easiest to try and obtain during the Assimilation Part 2 arc. But now that that arc is over, where are his shards? Currently, you will only find Dezek shards in a specific location in the game. And this means you will not find Dezok in the Recruit section of the game. There also isn't a Borg faction like Augment or Rogue where you can convert currency into crew shards. Find Dezok shards, you will need to open your refinery. Go to the Borg Tux section and find the expansion cube exchange tile. Here is where you can exchange the Vaniculum fragments for a lottery chance to obtain Dezok shards along with some other items, including shards for Borg Queen and Goza. Because of the five day cooldown of this exchange and RNG, it's going to be a long road to acquire and then level Dezok. If you are interested in obtaining Dezok, Borg Queen, and Gosa, you will need to fully engage in the Borg Solo Armadas or BSAs and the expansion cubes. Check out the Borg Solo Armada video for more details on how to engage in this loop. And if Scopely continues with its trend with new crew members until they are added to the normal acquisition options, I am sure we will see his shards available in upcoming events. We will also most likely see his shards in packs in the store. These will be opportunities to accelerate obtaining Dezok if you have not already received him or progressing his development. In conclusion, there's not much to really complain about with Dezok. He was the only officer released in this arc that didn't receive an adjustment to his below the deck ability. 
Outside of feeling they got the abilities reversed between Dezok and the Borg Queen, you can actually use Dezok by himself. Since he both triggers the assimilate condition and reduces the effectiveness of target's officers' abilities once the condition is triggered. Dezok is the only officer in this group where his below the deck ability is not 100% PvP, but can also be used in PvE as future assimilate crew are released. Dezok has more positive notes about his build versus the negative notes. Time will tell how valuable Dezok will be as new crew are added to the game, new ships, and new assimilate triggers are introduced to the game. Come visit us at our website and join us for further discussion on our Discord server linked in the video description. We hope we earned your thumbs up on the video and your subscription. And as always, we appreciate your sharing and comments. Live long and prosper, Commander. We hope to see you at Starfleet Academy.